Hi folks, uh, April 24th and Sunday evening, sat here with a glass of wine um, and you know I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, um, so yeah, frame's now finished uh, as far as I'm going to get. I'll go around and touch it. I always go around and touch up little areas where the paint is just, I've just caught the paint. Um, uh, whenever you're polishing you always end up catching little areas you shouldn't worry about that you just go around with a, a brush later on and touch them up but um, uh, I dug out plungers yesterday out of my fork parts and I knew I'd been keeping a set for this bike uh, a lovely original set um, I took a couple of photos which I'll probably show now yeah so here are photographs of the plungers I fitted uh, you can see um, as I pulled them out of the box I keep all the old plungers in they look a bit grotty but actually very good condition um, for shafts well not too bad actually very good in the centre uh, you can see up at the top that's how often they look when they've been sat for many years um, just another shot here but they did clean up quite well uh, so this is just before I stripped them down uh, you can probably see that those, when I dug them out, they look not too bad. They've been sat probably for 40 years. Um, uh, I can't remember if that set came with this frame or not. Um, but they're a lovely original set. Like all plungers, they've got a little bit of wear on them. Uh, funnily enough, they get corrosion in the area where you don't tend to use them. Uh, where they're, they're not sliding, i.e. down at the bottom, they normally corrode quite badly and they do corrode, there's an inner area in the middle which is for the greasing point so it's it's machined with a, an indent uh, and that area often, if, if a frame's been left standing for many years that area tends to go rusty uh, and certainly this side, I think, no sorry, this side, the brake side is a little bit worse than this side, the non-brake side, but actually both of them pretty good. Uh, both had still the alloy plugs in the top. Uh, I'll probably do a little, uh, um, I'm thinking of making some of these. Uh, I didn't know what these ones would be like and I was thinking I might have to remake these ones, but actually these are pretty good. So um, I've left a few marks of them on purpose, but I put them on the lathe and I'll show you some pictures of cleaning these shafts up on the lathe. I degreased them first. Yep, so here we are. Um, you can see the shafts on the lathe here, one of the two shafts. Not looking too bad now, it's had a light linishing. Um, looks much better. Uh, I'd probably put them on a rotary wire brush before I put them in the lathe to get the worst of any rust off. Um, and here you can see I was saying about an indent it had been machined slightly in in the centre of the shaft and that uh, uh, corresponds to where the grease nipples are on the alloy sliders so you put grease in it goes into that area that you can see reduced and goes along the spirals and that's what lubricates and as you can see that also attracts all the rust um, the Alloy plugs just been cleaned up just there. I gave them a light skim. As I say, I didn't go too far with them. Uh, they had some nice little original marks on them. Uh, and it gives them a character by keeping some of those marks on them. Um, again, uh, I think this is the other shaft. Again, being cleaned up. Just got it in the centre on the lathe. By the way, I cleaned the bed afterwards. You don't want to leave any using linishing cloth you don't want to leave any of that on the bed afterwards it's carefully wiped away um, so they cleaned up quite nicely in the end uh, didn't take too long um, greased along the spirals the shafts um, gave them a light polish and didn't go too far with it and looked pretty pretty reasonable Hi everyone uh, Paul here um, weekend on from when I last showed you uh, plungers fitted last weekend in the frame finished in the frame last week uh, uh, getting the paintwork ready looks nice uh, so this weekend it's just clean out some of the threads and starting to fit one or two little things in first thing is to fit new grease nipples on the forks on the steering head on the plungers uh, I think that's about it for the moment 
Um, the, um, normally I just fit new ones and we offer two types on the website which are both very close to original ones. Extended ones which I think fit in the bottom of the fork uh, steering head and wheels and the smaller blunt type that fit in the steering head and normally other, well, I can't remember, other areas around the bike. Um, however, and normally I don't even bother with old ones, it's just not worth the grief, often they don't work and ours look very similar. However, when doing the plungers last week I did find a couple of original grease nipples, again two or three different types, but one I do remember, it's got quite a, a nice distinct shape. Uh, so I thought I'd clean that one up, I've, clean, uh, I've blown it through, I'll paint it, it's a nice little just as, it's a nice little touch. I'll show you a couple of pictures of that and put it up hopefully when I edit the site so you'll see it in a moment uh, and then uh, uh, paint it and hopefully when, when you come back you'll see I'll start fitting up. Right, speak soon. Yeah, so back to the workshop about a week previous when I was sorting the plungers out. I can't actually remember if it's a set I used or a second set that I've got. I've got two or three sets of different frames. But the interesting thing about this is when I first dug it out, it actually, this particular one looked like it had brown grease, grease proof paper on it. And I remember 30 years ago, I used to go to auto jumbles and you used to see 16H parts like this, which were XWD. Now, this plunger wouldn't have been, but it did, it did look slightly like it may have been a new old stock. Anyway, it was cleaned up. You can see there it's got one of the grease nipples. It's got an original grease nipple in it. Now after cleaning it up and the other grease nipple, uh, I kind of thought, well, they look quite nice. So um, I removed them to clean them up and take off the, the corrosion. So uh, um, that, that, that particular one was cleaned up. And you can see here um, three different original grease nipples each one of them came out of a plunger. <laughs> I know it, it, it's trivia, but actually it's quite interesting just to see how the grease nipples did change. You can see the one on the left is quite distinctive. It's got quite a large head, very similar to the one on the right. They're just fractionally different, but uh, uh, almost certainly, certainly from around that same period. One in the middle, slightly different again, uh, has a slightly different head. You can see it isn't... isn't uh, 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 the same size of head uh, but it was the one on the left and the right I was interested in um, so just before giving them a quick coat of paint got two types there uh, the larger one on the left and in the middle the smaller original one uh, so after painting I fitted those uh, and there's the R type that we sell very similar on the right right uh, grease, grease nipples are going in um, uh, all's, all's gone pretty much as it should them. Uh, nearly all of the grease nipples on Norton forks, Norton uh, hubs are quarter BSC. So uh, should be a couple of photographs coming up when I edit this that show out in the garage as I was just uh, running a chaser tap through the uh, threads just to remove all the paint and just clean up the threads. Uh, it's worth remembering just to use a taper tap. Don't try and do it with a plug because you'll end up going in sideways or think silly. It's always worth doing it with a taper. Uh, I haven't done those two yet. I forgot to do those. But uh, those will have slightly different ones in. Uh, I think they're 5 16 uh, So I use two types. Um, on this one, uh, it's got a taper uh, grease nippling so you can get him from the side. Um, normally got a number plate or something over it when it's uh, assembled. Uh, I've actually seen, uh, although this one like many come out the front, I've actually got one set of blades where I think it's earlier, probably early 30s, uh, and they actually have a little casting that comes out a little bit to one side at an angle of about 30 degrees which is quite unusual. Um, I'll to show you uh, yeah. I've turned the frame round to do these being lazy but you can see I threaded uh, ran a tap through each of the uh, headstock ones 
and fitted in. Uh, and under each one I've fitted one of our little uh, 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 red fibre washers. Always worth doing that. Don't remove a the paint then. Yeah, so I had a sequence a little bit, but that was when I was actually just cleaning the threads out. So using a BSC tap um, with a little hand wrench. Um, and again with the girder fork steering head. That's actually got quite a number of holes in it. I think as I was doing this, I realised, yeah, let's go out to the workshop and do it. So there's two sizes there. There's a quarter and there's five sixteenths. Uh, you see with five sixteen so I was using a proper tap wrench uh, and actually quite a few holes there uh, quite satisfying when it's done it only takes a few minutes to do it uh, just take the time but it does look quite nice when they're done yeah so very quickly realizing one of the disadvantages of building a bike in your in your little living room or your little back room as this one is is <laughs> Uh, it's not uh, it's not a workshop and therefore you're more worried about knocking things and not having anywhere to put it but it's it's nice to work like this so uh, these have gone in you can see just here a uh, little socket set uh, very much like little socket sets um, the smaller size just for doing little jobs like this and it's a nice feeling when Everything goes in nicely, particularly when you've got fibre washers underneath, and you can just feel the amount to go. So there we go. Uh, I'll find it. Plain upright, grease nipple on this one, normally find best. Uh, the steering head. Uh, I normally put side ones on the spindle. Just see if, uh, where are we? The camera. Yeah, I normally put uh, side ones on the top. Uh, this one hopefully comes out in about the right spot, but you can always change them around uh, once you've got the bike assembled. Uh, and actually, if you want to, you can fit the other type. Um, so that's that one done. Uh, that one done. He's done. Plungers. I've painted those old original nipples. Uh, I'll do that. I've just got the steering column. That's two steering head grease nipples fitted. As you can see, they're angled grease nipples. Remove the paper off now. Um, you'll see that I would, I was planning to put uh, the steering head racers on today, but when I started looking, realised they're the ones I've used as patterns for the ones we're having made. So that'll have to wait. Um, little uh, fiber, red fibre washers underneath each one. Sod's law, they never quite fully line up exactly where you want them to. You do have to tweak and just be quite careful just to make sure you don't over tweak them. It's nice if, if they're pointing in the right direction now. I'll probably tweak them when they're on the bike. So that's about finished now on fitting the grease nipples on the frames other than just waiting for the plunger ones to dry and I'll fit those and show those. One last point I forgot to say, um, when I'm assembling I normally keep little jars of, I can never say it right, but it's, is it Molly Bedenum or Molly Denim grease, like black grease, very good on threads. Um, I don't know if you can still get this easily, I've, I've had a big old jar of it for years and I just take a bit out and put them in a little small jar and I tend to have it around when I'm assembling a bike and just keep it there and every time I put a fastener on I use a little bit of this or copper slip which uh, copper grease whichever I've got to hand but this one's me my, my favoured one by the way while we're talking about garden gate plungers we could go I saw something on Facebook where somebody was asking about those plugs that fitted in the top and what were they and was there a thread um, this is the second pair of plungers I had out at the same time as the ones that gone into the 39 bike as you can see the condition of those is a little bit worse you can see they're quite rough at that point although they will clean up okay but you can see that the one on the right doesn't have a plug at all, and the one on the left has the remains of a plug still in it. And actually, I can see somebody's tried to remove it, uh, and you can see that it's aluminium. If you look at the right-hand one, you can see there's like a slot, which I think allows the shafts to be rotated. I'm not sure. I think that may be to combat wear 
not entirely sure why that slot was there, but that's the only thing I can think of. Or maybe to retain them with a large screwdriver when you're undoing the nut at the bottom. Not quite sure. But um, this photo does show what they look like with the plugs not in. And often you'll find these spindles uh, don't have the plugs in. But you can see that on the left is the remains of an aluminium plug still still locked into the shaft. And before I use that, I'll probably have to just drill that out. But on the right is one where the plugs come out. And you can see, I'm not sure how clearly it will show it, but I looked quite carefully and put a scraper in and could see there was definitely no thread. Um, I'll probably make some of these plugs in the near future, make a batch of them, try and make them as close as I can to original. Hopefully you'll see them on the, uh, on the catalogue soon. I'm certainly going to be making the bolt that secures these. I'll show you about that in a little bit later in the video. Hi folks, Sunday morning, or Sunday lunchtime now. Uh, I did pretty much do what I did yesterday. I stopped work on the forks and started doing drawings, uh, which was quite useful. I'll show you a couple of things I did uh, in a minute. Uh, I have just put the last of the grease nipples in now. I said I was going to put an original one in this plunger. I thought I'd just quickly show you this if I can, just so you can see how this one is different. You can see just here, this particular one, I've seen it before a couple of times, it's quite an unusual one, I don't know if it was made specifically for plungers, probably not, it was probably just one that they used for a period, but I've seen it a couple of times, um, it's slightly longer than the other ones, uh, so I've cleaned it up, just make sure it works, and I've given it a coat of my Humbrol paint, uh, 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 and a matte lacquer over it, <laughs> still managed to scratch it, but um, it's just one of those little features isn't it? Uh, so I thought I'd fit that. I have fitted one which you probably can't see. Uh, just see if I can adjust the. Well, it should be focusing on it now. But this one here, which I've turned around. So this is the rear plunger. Uh, and if you've got a plunger motorcycle, plunger Norton, you'll know that it has a square sot slot. That's one of the identifiers on rear brake plates on Nortons. Uh, for for 30 years or so, the brake plate was relatively standard in its shape, a pressed steel brake plate, uh, two seven-inch shoes, single leading shoe. But there were a few variations, and one of the variations was the plunger ones have a square peg on the brake plate, which slides into this. Um, turning it round, this one here, uh, this grey snipple is also an original one, but different again, slightly smaller, but it's fitted anyway. So let's finish off with some photos. First of all, I, you didn't see me playing with it in the video, but this is the original Norton bolt that fits uh, underneath. Um, this is what secures the shafts into the frame on the plungers. Uh, and I've kept that out so that I can do a drawing of it and uh, replicate it in stainless. Uh, and you'll notice it's got a very thick washer, which I've noticed will always fitted to the bottom of plungers. But we'll see if I can get those laser cut. Probably the easiest way I can think to get them done. So hopefully should be doing those shortly. Um, these are the plungers fitted. Uh, they look quite nice now they're in. Um, I didn't actually need to polish these ones too much, and I certainly didn't want to over polish them. I sometimes get a bit carried away. But uh, I noticed that having cleaned them and given them a very light finish, they were pretty reasonable anyway, and they've got very little wear on them. So I couldn't feel any noticeable pl play once they've been fitted here. In fact, they've got a lovely sliding action to them. Um, that's a, a picture of the rear one. And you can see where the square uh, sort of slot is for the brake plate just above that the actual casting is very crisp very neat uh, and certainly I assume that's how they must have looked when they 
first were came out of the factory and fitted to the bikes from new. Certainly didn't look all different to that. Um, quite a chunky casting, obviously, for the brake, uh, as it's, it's got to act for the force of the brake being applied. Um, that's the left plug. That one's the one that had some marks on it. And I took the worst of the scratches away, but marks looked quite uh, uh, distinctive, so left those on, adds to the character. Uh, you can also see um, copper grease uh, around the frame look. Uh, so that they didn't lock in the frame. It's always worth doing. Never put anything in dry because eventually it will seize up. Um, you can see at the rear here, this is the, the other alloy plug. You can see at the rear, there's the locking bolt lug. Um, yeah, so last photograph is of the plunger springs. So obviously in pictures that's went before, you've seen the, the main sliders and the shafts. But obviously when they go back together, Finally, they'll need to springs and spring covers. Um, we made a batch of the springs last year. You can see the largest spring on the right is the compression spring. And the smaller spring on the left is the rebound spring. Uh, quite different gauge. Um, I used an original set of springs, actually a set from a, from a Manx chassis had very little wear and I'm pretty sure had been untouched for 50 years or so so they were a good set to use as a template uh, anyway they're the springs I've got a brand new set to go in but unfortunately at the moment I don't have a good set of covers I've got numerous covers I could probably make one good setup but I've been meaning to get those manufactured for quite a time now so I'm talking to somebody that has manufactured them for other uh, uh, marks does a really nice job unfortunately um, like anything like this it won't be cheap um, but there's a first sample one there that one's polished uh, and I'm hoping over the coming weeks just to get those a small batch made see how they go certainly one set I'll be just checking out and fitting to this bike uh, that's one of the one of the benefits of building a bike up is any new parts you can test against a, a, a bike so that's about it. They hopefully should be ready in three or four weeks and then I'll fit them hopefully. Uh, and I'll show you the, it, it, it's always fun fitting plunger springs. But um, I'll try and do a little video of that when we get to it. Okay, that's it. Um, speak to you soon.